Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering a question I commonly get in many different forms. I'm going to be talking about travel in the world of environmental science and specifically in my experience wildlife biology and these are some of the ways that you might find yourself traveling in this field. So is it paid by the employer, the employee? How long do you go? Where do you go? Do you go international, domestic? All those sorts of questions I'm gonna answer in this video, so let's get started. So the answer to these definitely is a bit of it depends, but I'm gonna go into more detail than that um, and not keep it as it depends. So I'm gonna start by talking about the different types of ways that you might travel in the field of wildlife biology and environmental science. So one is contract work. So contract work can happen anywhere in the world basically, where you apply to a job and you work that job for a set period of time. And that job usually is located in one spot and um, like I'm thinking like a field station somewhere or on a specific project because they need extra people to help out for three months, for example, on a specific project. Contract work can be a little bit easier to get because it is temporary and it's a really good way to get your foot in the door, especially in your first five years or so in this career field. And contract work can happen in your own backyard, but what's quite common is it'll be based somewhere in the world. So contract work can be a really great way to travel to a new country and live there for six months or a year, however long your contract is, and see if you like it. And also just get the experience of working in another country. So with contract work though, you have to be really aware of visa requirements. A lot of times they will require you have a visa for that country ahead of time. So if you're in somewhere like the EU, it might be a little bit easier for than for some people that are outside of uh, an area where they can easily get visas. Some options to look into to get a visa for your contract work is working holiday visas. I was on a working holiday visa. They're quite limited for Americans, but Canadians and Commonwealth countries can get working holiday visas a lot easier than some other countries. So that's something to look into. It usually gives you one to three years or so of work authorization to work in another country. If you were working a permanent job that has field work during field season, which generally runs through the spring and the summer, and they will actually pay for you to go and do field work within the boundaries of a permanent position. So typically with these types of jobs, you would be based out of an office near where you live at home, and you would have all of your expenses paid to travel to wherever you need to go to help do field work for that company or that academic organization. So I've actually done this one a few times and I do like that it gives you the benefits of a permanent job, like that stability, but you still get to go out in the field and travel wherever um, the company needs you to go during that set field season. And then you can kind of rely on having winters be a little bit slow. This is my preferred way of doing things and I found it works out really well with my own personal life. The downside of this is you don't always get to go where you want to go versus if you took a contract position and you're interested in a specific country, you could only take contracts in that country or that region. But with this kind of job, you are a little bit less you can't be too picky about where you go because they'll pretty much send you anywhere that the company or the organization needs you to go. For example, I've traveled domestically a lot in these sorts of positions. Generally, I find they're quite domestic based. Um, so you pretty much stay in your country or your region. And in rare cases, maybe do some international work when needed. There's a lot less international work associated with this type of job. There's also a lot more stability associated with it. The other option for travel is a 100% field job. So this is similar to the contract positions. A 100% field job can be permanent, but they can also be like long contracts, like one to two years or just one field season. The difference with this is that they would generally be based around where you actually live rather than taking a contract in another country. So it is quite similar and there's a lot of overlap, but uh, the times, an example of the time that I took a 100% field job um, that was based out of where I currently live, when I, was, when I was working as a wildlife biologist and I only did the field work and I was reporting back to people in the office who were doing the planning and the permitting. So I was only in the field gathering data, which was tough to do 100% of the time. And you know, while traveling a, like often for people who are travelers like myself, 
Uh, it might sound great on paper. It can also be really exhausting over time. Um, and it's really hard to maintain that kind of lifestyle, especially as you get older and your priorities shift away from work and onto other things. Some people do it their whole life though, and that's great for them. But uh, just some downsides to be aware of for a 100% field work job. A lot of times this job can be difficult to find. And I've even heard people say that 100% field job doesn't exist. The place to look if you are interested in these sorts of jobs is the resource industries because to be able to work 100% in the field, it needs to be like a really demanding field, like where they really have a lot of projects over and over again all year. And that's actually pretty rare. And so that's why a lot of the time people will kind of do office work and they'll do field work as needed. But on big projects, they dedicate people specifically to the fields. An example would be if you were stationed permanently in a national park, for example, and you were like being a park ranger and you were 100% of the time out at these um, field camps or wherever you're based out of. Another example is the oil and gas industry and wildlife biologists and environmental inspectors who do pretty much all the time just bouncing around to different pipeline or downstream projects as needed for those sites. Another thing I forgot to mention here is fly-in, fly-out workers are also included in this category. Fly-in, fly-out workers basically are as the job, as it sounds, um, they are based out of a major city, for example, and the company will pay for them to fly out of a major city up to a remote work camp to work for a set period of time before being flown home to have time off. Uh, fly in fly out schedules can be two weeks out in the field and two weeks back in your home or it could be three weeks in the field and one week back in your home and this is a very interesting work schedule especially if you were working in Canada and in the warm northern and remote regions. I know someone who does that this who works in a mine up in Nunavut I believe. So those are some interesting jobs but it definitely is a unique schedule to have those sorts of fly in fly out responsibilities every single month. So let's answer some other questions about travel. So do you pay for travel? So in contract positions where you're supposed to be based out of a field station, it's quite common that you have to cover the costs to actually get to that field station. An example of that is some work that I did in Bolivia with a big cat rescue. Um, you know, you had to actually get to the station and they wouldn't pay for your travel costs from your home country to that contract. In rare cases, you will find someone who's willing to pitch in a bit for airfare, but you're kind of expected to get to where the contract is based out of and all travel from then on out is usually covered. With the exception of sometimes they will or won't pay your rent, depending on whether or not they have accommodations available for field staff. For permanent field jobs that are based out of where you're currently living now, you will get all of your field expenses covered. Like that includes airfare, car, gas, um, hotel, stuff like that. And if it's not being covered, that's a huge red flag. It's very standard that the company pays for the cost it takes to travel to that location and carry out that field work. An exception might be food. A lot of times they'll give you a stipend, like I think 50 to hundred dollars a day in my field is pretty normal. And that's just for your food costs, laundry, and any sorts of little things that you have to pay for when you're out on the road. People ask me a lot, can you have a family and can you have a husband? For some reason, it's people don't ask about whether or not they could have a wife in the field. It's usually like people asking whether or not they can, their husbands are okay with them going to the field. Um, so, I mean, I shouldn't be one to answer this because I am an unmarried, unmother, non-mother. So I am not the expert on this but it's up to you. There's nothing that says that you can't be a parent and be out in the field. I work with a lot of fathers out in the field, but I rarely work with new mothers. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And there's also a stigma against new mothers in the field, which I think is rather unfortunate um, because fathers don't face the same sort of stigma. But you know, I'll report back on that if I'm ever in that situation. But it's about um, organizing things within your own life to be able to go and travel. And it's really gonna depend. Like if you take a 100% field job and you have pets and commitments at home, maybe a 100% field job is not the right choice for you. But if you take a job where a field season's only about a month to two months and you get time in between to go home, 
maybe that could fit in with your own personal life and you'll still be able to balance your life commitments around that. Or maybe, you know, you don't want to actually go out longer than one week or so into the field. And that's okay too. And so maybe you want to work for um, a government organization or an organization where the field stints are very close to home and not that long. A lot of people also ask how long you're going to be in the field for. So that also depends. If you take a contract job for three months to a year based in another country, don't really expect to be able to go home um, too much within that contract. However, if you are working for a organization, say you're working for municipal government and the boundaries of your government is really only the city you live in, you're probably not gonna go out for longer than day trips and you're probably just gonna go around your city. If you work for an international organization, maybe you're gonna be traveling internationally a lot more. Um, you know, if you're working on these long-term pipeline projects, for example, say you're working on a four month long construction project, you're probably gonna be away for four months with maybe only a few trips home in between. So you can kind of think about how long you wanna be away and think about each job individually and kind of design and pick what job you would prefer and what works with your home life. And you know, this is a competitive field, so we can't be too picky at the beginning. So be open to circumstances that might not be perfect, at least at first. And then you're able to slowly like target and figure out actually how much time you want to be away as your career goes on. So try to be open minded at first. I know that's hard if you have family commitments. Um, you know, there always also is office jobs if you aren't interested in traveling at all. So that's kind of the rundown of uh, what it's like to travel as a wildlife biologist. Do you guys have any questions about travel? Leave them in the comments section down below. I also have a video about the questions you might not want to ask publicly or you might be afraid to ask. I will link to that one above in the card shown on the screen. And thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.